You're watching and listening to Wood and Eric. The show begins now. Good morning, Eric. Good evening, Wood. You know, we have to change that to good afternoon because it's it's almost 1 p.m. Oh, here sorry. Me. Well, that's, that's because we're running like two hours late. And oh, we yeah. had daylight savings while I was away. Yes, that's yeah, absolutely. We did. I'm still waking up at like 9 a.m. It's freaky. I don't like it. That's weird. Who are you? I don't know who I am. It's been two weeks. I don't know who you are. That's why we got to catch up today. In fact, I don't even know who this other person in the call is. We, who I is mean, it? they've gone through so many name changes and voice changes. I haven't seen you in two weeks. Who are you? I, I don't know. Well, I guess you could call. I, I am the the producer formerly known as the the producer formerly known as the the intern. The intern. Uh, I am. That's right. Eric. You have. I forgot about the intern. Hey, how about you? You, you do your job and play the voice. That was very aggressive. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Why don't you play was, us some thoughtful, was, thoughtful hi, voice? Hi, uh, long time caller. Uh, wait, no, darn it. Uh, long time uh, listener. <laughs> love you guys. Uh, first time caller. Uh, so my question is for Wood. I was Ooh. wondering. So I noticed that you uh, care a lot about your health and like what you put into your body, like avoiding sugar as much as possible. And so my question is, have you ever heard of um, how bad vegetable oils are? And if he's not, there's a great video by what I've learned on YouTube that I think that you would really enjoy. Uh, and I was just wondering if you've ever heard of it, because if not, then I think that it's definitely worth looking into. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Handy tip about vegetable oil. Okay. Um, I actually do know that vegetable oil is bad for you. I haven't mm -hmm. seen any videos on that. I just kind of used common sense. So I've I've been using avocado spray and avocado oil for a long time now. And I also have sunflower oil, but I don't really use it. I definitely, yeah, avocado oil. Thanks. I do also, why, how, how come Eric, when he said the sugar thing, you made a face? Well, because it was... <laughs> I was just thinking of how like how poorly I've been eating over the last week. Oh, like, hey, you, you, you a little get bit. a question, and it's like, okay, Wood got a question for you, and it's like, oh, I know you care about what you put in your body. I'm like, oh boy, it's like it's a good thing you didn't ask me. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny actually. There's like three of us here, and he's like, this is a question for Wood. Now you like to be healthy. <laughs> Uh, thanks for the voicemail. If you want to leave a voicemail, the number's around. I no, I don't know what it is, but I'm sure it's. It ends in it's uh, four four nine two seven. <laughs> That's right that here. Helps. Yeah, just two one zero nine five one four nine two seven. Perfect. I like how Eric gave him the end of the numbers. You just kind of guess the rest. <laughs> you just like guess just trying guess. until you get through to something. Yeah. Uh, we uh, we took a couple weeks off, so we have a lot to catch up on. Um, I went to Pennsylvania and New York, and we can talk about that. Ooh. Um, mm. I don't know what these boys have been doing because we literally don't talk until the show goes live. Yep. Um, oh. one thing I want to say to start the show though is as we were prepping to get ready, uh, Kim was making dinner and Eric was here for this. She comes <laughs> upstairs and she goes, um, I just got stung by a wasp in the kitchen. And I was oh. like, excuse me. So I went down there and sure enough, there was a wasp in our kitchen and she's making dinner and it, flew on her back and stung her. Oh. So I, I got two different kinds of spray. It landed on my coffee machine and I just went <laughs> and so beamed it down. So one of them was down. your avocado cooking spray and the other well, one Well, no, they weren't. The, no, no, he used the vegetable oil. <laughs> yeah. Because it's bad got, for you. I heard how bad vegetable oil spray was and I knew that sucker wouldn't like it. <laughs> That's funny. No, no, I bug spray. I had two different kinds of Because yeah. I already had a ton in the garage because we have like a wasp problem in the neighborhood. And every time I'm working out, they fly in under the garage and I'm like, put like chest pressing like 300 pounds. I can't get up 300 <laughs> pounds, but a lot of weight for me. And then a wasp is like buzzing around my face. So that's funny. <sighs> I hope, she's, I hope okay. she's okay. I, That's the I second said, time in our relationship she's been stung by something in our house. Well, not in our house, but stung by something in the house she was in. When I was in Canada and she was living on her farm, she got stung in her bed by a scorpion. Oh my what God. Heck, dude? I know. What, no I, wonder you're moving away. Baffling. Yeah. She lived like on a farm. So it's like a, a little less like of a protected house than like our house mm -hmm. is here, you know, brand new. And yeah, she just woke up with like a little scorpion in her bed that had stung her. Terrifying. Ugh. It's like literally my my entire nightmare. I hate scorpions. I've never actually seen one, 
but either. I still hate them. I'm still terrified. I I'm never going to sleep again. We have the fear, you know, the, the whole spider thing in Australia, like it's coming into summer now. Um, it's only just starting to warm up. So now is the season where you got to check your shoes before you put them on and you got to check under the toilet seat as well, because the, to- uh, you know, there's toilet spiders. You, you got to check yes. under the trees. In the yeah. Australia, bears. there are spiders everywhere. Toilet mm-hmm. spiders, electrical box spiders, garden spiders, house spiders. Oh, yeah. Are you scared to literally like, even move? Mm-hmm. Because I'm, I was, ter- I, when I used to live in my old home with Drew, he was the designated spider killer because I'm terrified. <laughs> and the huntsmans were always in my room. And one day I woke up and there was one on the ceiling right above me, like this massive faced sized huntsman. Yeah, they're not going to hurt you, though, but it just it scares you. You know, they're going to hurt me when I jump up terrified they're on me and slam into the wall out of fear. You could you could die of a heart attack from seeing those things. Yeah, Uh those killers, dude. Oh, my God. (laughs) Actually, Uh, man, the worst the worst spider I ever found uh, was when I was cleaning up my car when I was like 16 and I was reaching out. I, I, I had didn't keep a very clean car. So I was like pulling out assignments from school and stuff from under my driver's seat and stuff. And uh, I reached under there and I felt something on the tip of my middle finger. And I pull my hand out and this brown recluse comes oh. flying out from underneath my car seat. Uh. Oh my God. It, it was like, <laughs> okay, that's, that's I'm sorry to creep everyone out at the start of this show, but the worst <laughs> huntsman story I ever heard was this friend of mine was driving and she pulled down her sunshade and a big huntsman fell out and onto her lap while oh she God. was like oh, on the dude. freeway. And I still oh, no. think about that story every day and I cry because it sounds te- let's move on. It was an accident. I'm getting, oh my God. I'm getting so freaked out now. And I'm sure a lot of people listening are doing the same right, thing move where on. my, my body is starting to get itchy and I'm like, is that, is that a spider? Is that, <laughs> is that one on me right now? I hate it. Dude, what do you want All to right. talk about first? Because once I get started with the PA thing, I'm going to be gone for a while. I, okay. I have, I have a couple of things that I want to talk about. Okay. Um, I'll say one of them first, because okay. this is a bombshell update and it's very integral uh, to me and into mm. the show. Okay. Uh, and I've had no joke. I can't even think of the number of people. At least two people ask me since that's a the lot. Last show. That is a lot. Um, honestly, like a mind boggling number. So I found out what happened to the valued viewer forms. Mm. Oh, I forgot mm. about those even. I haven't thought oh about God. those in weeks. <laughs> I saw somebody comment about them today, actually, in the chat today. Why what? are they still in your. They get returned to sender? What is happening? What is hey! going on? Why aren't they in my house right now with me? <laughs> no, it's not a good thing, Derek. Oh. This is a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, bad. Boo. Uh, I mean, it's good that they still exist, but what, what are it they doing? It is good that they're not lost, but what happened? All right. So <laughs> the date of postage here, uh, what, what was the date? It must have been in like August. It was August, I think. There, uh, there's a way for me to see the date for some. Uh, well, don't, don't show your address. No, I'm the. Oh, anyway, um, so yeah, I got a return to sender uh, thing from Australia Post, and it says this item has been returned to sender due to electronic advanced data requirements. Items containing goods must be accompanied by a customs form and um, sent as a parcel f- for customs data to be captured and transmitted. Which is okay, fine, but why would the lady at the post office yeah. tell me? That is because she said, what's in there? I said, oh, they're just documents. I said, they're just, it's just paper. That's all it is. I said, there's 20 sheets of paper. And she said, okay, well, we, we can send it like this untracked. So then literally the, um, the day after we did the last show, I get a, I get a, a package delivered. I'm like, oh my God, there they are. <laughs> so the lady at the post office totally gave me the runaround. Yeah. Uh, paying $18 of postage only oh! to have that come back to me. Wow. That sucks. Dude, tell me I mean, about it. at least they're not lost. But what you, what are you gonna do? You gonna they try might as well be lost gonna, at this point. <laughs> yeah, try again. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. If I can get them get them out to you properly now, like my God, there's twenty there's twenty people waiting for value. I know, forms. and they've been, been rabid. They've been, 
they've gone through the gauntlet to mm-hmm. get these. Some people have been yeah. waiting almost a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, uh, yeah, they actually have been. We, have, we put a pause on giving any more out and taking more calls because we didn't want to start backlogging these certificates anymore. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so as the title alludes to, Christmas is cancelled. Oh, that's why uh, Christmas is cancelled. Yep. Okay. No value viewer forms. I think we could still do Christmas. Are you looking forward to that summer Christmas, by the way? No. Kim and I, I were like talking it. about that the other day. Because now I, like now here in Texas, I get upset because it doesn't get cold enough and doesn't snow. But mostly that it doesn't get cold enough during Christmas and it's still mm-hmm. kind of warm. I'm like, this sucks. And then I, I had this thought the other day. I'm like, at what point did I get that in my head? that I needed a nice cold Christmas because I had 25 boiling 40 degree, like 100 yep. degree day Christmases in Australia. And it never once did I think anything of it. Like it felt like Christmas to me. We would open up our presents and go to the beach. And like that was Christmas while mm-hmm. it was like dry and dead outside. But now all of a sudden, if it's if it's not like 20 <laughs> degrees outside, I'm upset because it's not Christmas. You want that Hallmark Christmas. You know, you and I, we spent a a Christmas, not a Christmas day, but we were we were together on Christmas in 2014. You and I and, and Boxing Day. Oh yeah, we uh, were. We we were. We so we we spent a good old holiday. We together. made videos by the pool. We did. It was our top five winter levels. But anyway, that we you. did with like <laughs> the heat scorching down on us, and we were in our board shorts talking about we were, winter uh, sucking down VBs. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, probably the totally. last the last alcoholic drink drink i drank as well yeah you took me. one sip and you were like ah. <laughs> <laughs> i did in the video it was so <laughs> gross uh, anyway that's, that's right there. Uh, oh there my go. god well speaking of uh moving somewhere colder and getting a nice christmas should i dive let's into it. it yeah let's do it all right yeah, well I'm first up i want to say i'm sa- i'm bummed out that kim's not here and a part of this um because this is very much a story that kim should be telling with me um but she got stung by a bee today. No, she uh, she's working really hard coming up on Christmas. She's doing a lot of stuff for her Etsy store and her oh, YouTube wow. channel. She's trying to like really like buckle down. So she was like, I just, I'm sorry, Wood. I just can't collab with you right now. There is just too much going on. I'm like, okay, I, I get it. You do you. Um, so I'll be telling this story on behalf of both of us. But we alluded to it. So let's just like come fully clean. We okay. want to move to Pennsylvania. Um, we were dancing around it a little bit in the last show. I think we did just kind of say it, but we were still kind of dancing around because we hadn't really gone there yet other than um, for too many games a couple of times for a weekend. Um, but we we definitely hadn't explored anything there yet. So we were leaving our options open. We were like, well, we, we think PA is going to be good for us, but there's Maryland, there's New Jersey, there's upstate New York, there's Delaware. There's a lot of places around there that could be suited to us. Uh, So let's go look at a bunch of houses in PA all around, get to know the area and then see how we feel. Um, So to backtrack a little bit, I have a tiny bit of a bombshell that I was saving from you guys. Um, Mm -hmm. I didn't tell you. So we booked the trip three or four days to go look at houses, but Five days out before we left, we just so happened to find a house online that we really, really, really liked. So we had the realtor we were working with go out. His name's Keeve, by the way. He's a super nice guy. And I said I'd give him a shout out. Okay. Uh, So if you're looking for a real estate agent in PA, hit me up and I'll give you his information because he's actually awesome. And you'll find out why as we go through this story. Oh, so five days out, we see this house. He goes and sees it and gives us a video tour. Now, he tells us the market over here is crazy right now, especially where we're looking. So this house isn't going to be there when we go and see it. But if we put an offer in and it gets accepted, then we can go and see it. And if we hate it, like really hate it, we can still get out of it. Oh, so we were like, well, what's the harm in putting an offer in? Right. Mm -hmm. So we put the offer in and he comes back with us in like three hours. And he's like, they accepted. Oh, oh my. my. And we were like, what? And he's like, it's what I do. And I was like, all right. So you're scary because he is very efficient at his job. Um, so we had we had the house on lock 
for five days before we went out there. Now, this added a ridiculous amount of stress to our lives because all of a sudden, I don't know if you've ever like bought a house before, (laughs) but there is a lot that goes into it. You can't just be like, all right, yeah, I'll put an offer in and then that's it. There are so many things you have to sign. There are so many people you have have to talk to. There's, we actually lost two full days of our lives just talking about the house, finding the house, looking at the house, signing documents for the house. And we, we scheduled these three days out Like what, this is what we're going to, and we're going to work up into, we got no work done before we went because we were so stressed out, regretting our decision to put this offer in because we, we felt trapped. We were like, we haven't seen the house, but we have the house. Like it was so hard to wrap our heads around. Um, so we flew in, which I don't know how much we want to get into, but everything was a nightmare with the whole trip, actually. Like to preface this a little bit more, the first three or four days in, uh, in PA sucked. We hated it. Um, we love PA and we're, we want to move there and we fell in love with it and we'll talk about why, but mm-hmm. everything went wrong. Um, wow. We Ooh. got an Uber from our house to go catch the plane and the Uber driver was like 90 and refused to follow Google Maps. So he went so many wrong directions, so many wrong turns, was just ignoring Google Maps altogether that we missed our flight. It took oh us my twice as long oh, to get no. to the airport. Um, and then we get there and we were very lucky. This one time we were lucky. She was like, look, you've missed your flight, but I'll get you on the next one for no charge, which was an hour later. I don't know how that happened because that never happens. Wow. But we got on the next flight. We get in. I mean, and then it's like all these little things. Like we landed, we couldn't find the rental car place for like an hour in the airport. We finally find it. And then they gave us the wrong car. So we had to like figure (sighs) that out. And then we finally get to the place we're staying. And me being big brain, I was like, look, we'll stay in Philly city because that will be exciting. And it's like a good starting point. And then, cause you know, we're going up, we're going left. So if we stick in Philly, we'll have a good like area of the surrounding, but Never been in the city before. It sucks to drive in the city. We couldn't find the place we were staying. We had to circle the block like 10 times trying to find it, the Airbnb. And then we're like knocking on all these random doors in freezing weather when we weren't dressed for it. We finally realized we're supposed to go up to this random unmarked door, press a button. They buzz you in. Then you go up to the room, get the card key for the parking garage, which is two blocks away. And then we're driving around looking for the parking garage for like an hour. We finally find that down a hidden one-way street. And then it's the (sighs) tiniest parking garage you've ever seen. (laughs) Like I'm talking like corners so tight that I had to like 10 point turn around. I scraped the car twice on poles trying to get through. By the time we finally, like we landed at like 4 p.m. By the time we finally parked the car, got our bags and our luggage, walked them two blocks to blocks to the apartment, it was almost midnight. And I kid you not, <laughs> I actually have footage of it on my phone of proof. We get to the apartment and there are fire trucks lined up outside the apartment building and we walk in and the fire alarm is going off and every single resident in the building is in the lobby. Like that happened in the time it took us to find the parking garage and get back. And that was wow. pretty much the entire trip. So we were stood there in the lobby with all our bags and everything for like half an hour talking to admittedly this very nice couple who had their two cats with them because everyone brought their pets downstairs because they thought there was a fire. Mm -hmm. Uh, One thing I will say is it was a really nice lobby. And uh, when the firemen all ran in, it kind of reminded me of Ghostbusters a bit. (laughs) Like it was, it was kind of sick. I was like, man, that'd be a really cool job. Like you're in the middle of Philly city. You're a fire guy running into a nice lobby with like your axe and stuff. Like it looked kind of, it looked kind <laughs> of sick. Axe. I yes. actually filmed it. Do you want, I'm, I'll get it up on my phone. All right. Um, I'll, uh, while you, while you looked it up, I'll, I'll comment. The last time we were in Philly was 2016. Uh, we went there from uh, my best friend's graduation. Uh, we graduated from Drexel. So we were there for a couple of days and we did a lot of like inner city driving. It's not a great place to drive. Uh, the parking, uh, parking situation was awful. Cause we tried to park for, uh, Pat's cheese steaks, not Gino's cause Gino's is trash. That was down uh, the road from us. And we never got to go, dude, we just didn't I'm telling time. you, I, I 10 point turn is the minimum that you have to do to parallel park. All right. Let this focus in. All right. Oh, so this oh, is, nice. there's the fire truck. So I'm not lying. Here's Kim. You can see that flash of the fire alarm going off. Oh, that's the, yep. Was it ear piercing, oh. like shrill? 
It wasn't too bad. Okay, that's good. There's the firemen coming in, everyone in the lobby. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And you know what's funny too? <laughs> this was kind of funny. Welcome to Pennsylvania. There was a restaurant right next door. And after about 20 minutes of us standing there, this uh, waitress comes out with like a tray filled with beer. And she's like, does anyone need a beer? And I was like, that's really nice. That's really wholesome. But they were you know, giving out beers to people. So this one guy was like, yeah, I'll get one. And she's like, okay, I still have to charge you. <laughs> What? I was like, what? So you're what trying to you're trying to capitalize on this horrible position, and you, you can tell respect that hustle. The look on his face was like, <laughs> oh, I don't want one then. But he's already said yes, and everyone's heard it, so he's uh-huh. he's had to take it. And, and he's the only one who's going to get a beer then. <laughs> I felt well, literally, because I felt bad for him um, until no one else wanted one. Obviously, at that point, as she's walking away, though, I don't know if we'll focus in on time. She crashed into the door and spilt them all. <laughs> that's her back. I don't know if you could see, but that's her back yeah. there sweeping them up. There was like Yo. seven beers. One got bought and then she bumped the door and all of them crashed on the floor. <laughs> oh. That's what you get for trying to capitalize on people's misery. Oh, I know. that's hilarious. That was oh, a that karma. was a very weird indication of the rest of the trip, though, where just everything went wrong. Like, I'll talk about the house stuff in a second, but like even when we were leaving, um, so we picked the car up at the airport, but I'd organized to drop it off in Philly City and then Uber to the train station, Penn Station or whatever, I think in Philly. Or is that in yep. is that in New York? Is Penn Station? I get my I stations know, confused. Station. Whatever train stations in Philly that goes to New York, um, chat can probably tell me. I'll keep my eye on it. Um, but again, because it's in the city, we're dumb and couldn't find it. So we're we're doing loops. Penn is New York. Whatever the train station is in Philly then. Um, but we're doing Philly loops. We can't Philly train station. We can't find the station. We finally pull in. Yet yeah, thirtieth. It's on. It's on thirtieth Noah. So yeah. whatever that means. It's probably just called the thirtieth. It doesn't matter. Um, we finally <laughs> pull in, and we're in the lobby. We have like ten minutes until our train. And these trains, by the way, they're not like subway trains where you two, two bucks and you go. These are like, like almost like planes. Essentially, you you find the right train and the right the right line of train, and then it's like fifty bucks a ticket. Um, it's a nice train that goes from, um, Pennsylvania to New York in like an hour and a half. But we had like 10 minutes and she looks at me and she goes, do you want to take the car and fill it up first? And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, it's almost empty. And we charge $10 a gallon to fill it, which oh my that's God. over like a hundred dollars for gas. And I was like, I don't know what to do. And I just had this moment where like it came crashing down that we either... Just give them a hundred bucks, go and probably miss the train and most and most likely miss the train after spending 20 bucks on an Uber to get there, miss the train, have to buy train tickets last second, which who knows how much that's going to cost if there's even a train. So I'm like, can we just take the car back and drive to New York with it? And she's like, yeah, but it's going to cost you $200 <laughs> to go oh. across state line. I swear oh everything God. on this trip was fee after fee. But in my head, I was like, that's going to be easier and probably about the same anyway. So fine, we'll just we'll just drive. So we drove. We It was kind of a nice drive, honestly. Um, but it Take was just... A good old Route 81. Yeah, it was cute. I mean, it was frustrating, but I mean, like, PA and, like, that area actually has full. So all the leaves are brown and the sky is gray. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really cute, actually. It was a nice drive. And we stopped in New Jersey to get breakfast. It was, it was, fu- it was fun, honestly. We made the most of it. We we got to the the line the border line of New Jersey and New York and ditched the car. There was actually a really nice guy working there. It was like an old old guy with a really thick accent. I don't know what accent it would have been, like New Jersey accent. To me, it kind of just sounds like that coffee accent or whatever. Just that to that hey, area. Give me a coffee. But he was like 80, 70, thick accent. We pulled in. He was super nice, and he's like, oh. In his thick accent, I could barely understand. He's like, oh, they're going to charge you 200 extra dollars to drop it off here. I was like, yeah, I know they told me. And he's like, but they originally told you 420, right? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, okay. So 420. I was like, yeah. I was like, okay, cool. So, uh, and he looked at Kim. So it was 420, right? And Kim Kim was like really confused as to what was happening. She's like, what do you mean? I was like, just say yes. She's like, yeah. And he's like, okay, great. <laughs> just puts in 420 for us. So that was super nice. As in like $4.20? Or 420. 420. So it was going to be 620. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yes, I got, I'm with you. Yep. 
Um, but he was like, oh, so 420, right? Just knocked okay. off the 200. Oh, nice. I don't, I don't know how nice he guy. did, how he figured it out, yeah. but he was super nice. So again, you know, kind of got screwed, kind of frustrating, but it got fixed by someone on the other end. So that's nice. That's, that was yeah. lucky both times. Um, sadly, we got in there at five, called an Uber. It said it would take 30 minutes to get to our apartment in New York. And it took like an hour and a half oh. because it was like, gridlock traffic in new york city which is mm-hmm. ins- as we learned insane i felt so yeah. bad for the driver too because he was like you're pulling me into new york in the middle of peak hour traffic so not only can i not take any other jobs for like an hour and a half i can't operate in new york i can only operate in new jersey i can only take people in new jersey so i can't get anyone in new york which means i then have to get out of new york to take another so i ruined his whole night so oh my gosh. I think the 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 cab was like fifty dollars and I just tipped him double. So I tipped him like fifty dollars. I've had a similar experience actually. That's nice. Go on. Yes. Well, one so I, I was working for a body camera company a long time ago. And one of those sent me out to uh to California, um to San Jose. To San Jose. Yeah, that's right. And uh and in order to uh, get to where I needed to go. I was going to have to get a rental car to drive the rest of the way to uh, Stockton, California. Um, so I was going to do that, but I was uh, also kind of uh, an important person here who had to ha- handle some uh, some crisis was happening at the time, uh, basically. And and what ended up happening was I had to triage a bunch of different things going on all at the same time. And so in order to allow me to do this, because I couldn't drive while doing this, I had to take an uber and that is how i had oh, basically i don't know how if you know how long it far it is from san jose to stockton but uh, the most expensive uber uber drive of my of my life it basically it was like 200 dollars, 50 dollar tip on top of that and he's like and i'm just gonna like spend the rest of my day here because that's you know because <laughs> that's wow because of traffic getting back would have been mm-hmm. insane from there but that's wow. Yeah, that was uh, that was a pretty intense time there. <laughs> yeah, I always feel bad even getting uh, an Uber to the to, to the plane plane station. I don't know why I was trying to say plane station, but from my plane house station because it's like a forty five minute drive. So whoever picks me up here has to drive forty five minutes out of their way, and I always feel bad about that. Um, but anyway, the trip was a nightmare. If I think of more nightmarish things that happened, I will mention them. But the actual house hunting bit. Also kind of sucked, if I'm being honest. I, really? I, I don't know if you've ever looked at houses, but like before going, Keith, the realtor said to us, yeah, usually in a day, once I've had a couple come through and look at like four to five houses, they're usually pretty spent, like done physically, emotionally. I mean, the houses that you've seen all kind of start to bleed into each other. You start to lose any sense of like what you're looking for or what you've seen. But mostly it's just pretty exhausting. And to me that, I mean, even now that I'm saying it, I'm like four to five houses. I mean, I I can see four to five houses, but he was 100% right. And the thing that sucked was we were only there three days. So we just wanted to look at as many as we could while we were there. So all three days, all we did from when we woke up to when we went to bed was literally drive around looking at houses nonstop. And it got to a point where all three of us were done. We were like, we've seen enough. He, he knew that we'd gone past the point of like no return and that we had hit, we knew we'd hit the wall of like, we're not finding what we want. And at this point we've forgotten everything we've seen and we don't know how to compare it to what we have seen. And we were just exhausted. Like it's really hard to explain. Um, Fair enough. So we were just mentally exhausted. And uh, we, well, I will say that to, to finish the story with the house we put an offer in on, probably should finish that story. That was the first one we saw. We drove straight there because they wanted an answer like yesterday. Not yesterday as in when I sit here, but yesterday yeah. is when we got there yesterday. Yeah. Um, and it just, uh, it, 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 it was a very nice house, but it was also very dated. Um, it's a very, very older house. I mean, a lot of houses up there are very old, but that one hadn't really been kept up. There was a lot of work that needed to be done. There was an older couple living there and they'd made some weird choices like upstairs. They didn't want to go down to do the laundry. So rather than have like a bathtub upstairs, they put the washer and dryer in the bathroom. Mm. So it was just like a lot of weird choices of things that we were like, well, we're going to have to get a bathtub. Um, we're gonna have to change the carpets because they have like flowers. Um, yeah, like flowers all on the carpets. There's like wallpaper. There's like weird, but the biggest 
uh, Killer for It All was the basement was like weirdly segmented, which would be like my working space. It, it like kind of wrapped around like a hallway and there was nowhere mm-hmm. to actually set a camera up. So ultimately we were like, no, this isn't the one. Um, also, there was a funeral home across the street. Uh, which no. I, neither neighbors. Kim or Keeve really understood my grievance with that. They were both like, so what? But literally as we were pulling in, like you can, it's literally across the street. And there was people there in suits bringing in a body. I'm like, I don't know, man. This is just kind of weird <laughs> for me. Like, well, I don't know if I could have friends and guests over and have like a party when like I know people are like dead across the street. <laughs> so you literally, it was, a, it must have been a good location because it was dead center right in the middle it of was, town. Yeah. It was a killer mm-hmm. spot. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, well, that's, that, I don't know. That, that's weird. I'm, I'm sorry that it didn't quite go the way that you wanted to, but you've had the experience under your belt now. Yeah. Um, I guess I, we've never looked for houses and we're, we're starting to talk about it more. Like we're trying to get a savings plan going, whether we decide to build or buy here or there. Like, I don't know, but like, you know, flying across the, you know, halfway across the country and then doing all that, like it's a logistical nightmare. It's yeah, be mentally it's draining, like, getting in Ubers and, and looking at houses. It's and it's stressful. just like, well, we were driving, but it's, it's stressful because we know if we didn't find the house, it was stressful for two reasons. One, if we found a house, it meant that we would have to do that whole process again of applying, but then we'd have to come back before the end of December to sign everything away. And mm. then we're not ready to move in right now. We'd probably look at moving in like March at the earliest because it's going to start mm. snowing soon. So we can't really yeah. like oh, yeah. do all that while it's snowing. And we can do it in December when we're the busiest of ever. So if we bought a house, we'd have to worry about all of that. But if we didn't get a house, then we're going to have to come back in like March and look all over again and start from scratch. So both were really stressful at the time. And the very last house we saw, we actually, like Kim loved it. Everything about it was perfect. The Hmm. only thing was while the basement was a good size, the ceilings were only seven foot tall. And that's where I would have needed to work. And I'm six one. So yeah. when it comes to filming and everything, I'd be like oh, no way. bumping yeah. my, I mean, the lights would be shining on me from right here. Like there's, it, it yeah. just wasn't, I mean, I tried, so I, we even talked about like, can we dig down, like dig out the basement? We had a contractor come in and look if we could dig, that's how serious we were getting. And he was like, this is going to be super expensive. It's a dig down. So we were like, all right, well then we yeah. can't. Yeah. And Kim was sad about that one because she really wanted that one. And I did too, well, but. You know, the right house is out there. I mean, you'll, you'll find it in, uh, when, when the time comes, I mean, like the good thing is, is you're looking now you're, you're, yeah. you're getting, you're, you're getting yourself geared towards that. So now you know what you don't like, and then you've seen things that you do like. So I guess that criteria can kind of hone in on mm-hmm. that and then come spring. Yeah. We definitely um, learned a lot. We learned that we need to focus on the more modern houses because clearly we're not, we're not liking dated and we need a, uh, we need somewhere I can work that has a ceiling. I won't bump my head on like that basement. Yeah was mostly seven foot, but there was actually a part that ducked down for half of it. And I couldn't fit under there. I hit my head on it. I'm like, I can't, why I can't. Yeah. But was um, this a basement for ants. <laughs> it felt like that, but it was actually just like the duck work. They had like buried under a ceiling. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, no. but I oh. will say it wasn't all negative. I mean, we were very stressed out. Um, I will. One thing I'll add is that that last, that one with the duck ceiling, Kim wanted it so bad, and I loved the house. Other than that, that we we almost did put an offer in, um, because Keith once again okay. was like, "If you want this house, I can get it for you tonight." Because there was no offers really? on it, he's like, "I can get it for you tonight." So Kim and I were sat in the car at a mall for two hours talking, just what go from day to night in that like peak change hour, talking like, "Do we do this?" And we talked ourselves into it. We were gonna do it. So she called her mom and told her mom we were gonna do it. And then I was like, okay, let's call him wow. and tell him we're going to do it. And then I just, I couldn't call. I just, we, the whole weekend was so stressful. I didn't know if I was making the right call right there because I had second guess on the, on the basement. And I honestly just had a massive breakdown in the car. Cause like, that's how you know how it wasn't right. Well, I also yeah. had this thing of like, even if it's right, this is such a big call to make. Like, oh yeah. What if, his, Making his, any sort of decision under that kind of pressure yeah. is yeah. is bound to late lead to regret. Even like if because if things had continued to like go that way, that wrong kind of way, 
like you would have that that would have been even more devastating, right? Yeah. So, and there was also this personal crisis inside me where like Kim and I haven't been happy here, and we've wanted to move for a long time, and like we've known that, and like we want to get out of Texas for our own reasons. Mm-hmm. But at that moment, I realized that while I'm not happy here. I'm really, really happy with Kim. And for the first time in my life, I'm really happy with my life in general. Like the last five or six years with Kim has been the best of my life. And I realized that even though she was coming with me and everything was coming with me, I was changing everything. Like in that moment by saying, yes, we are changing everything. And what if something changes? And I don't have any reason to think that it will, but I Mm -hmm. just like broke down. I'm like, I'm for the first time in my life, so scared of change. And it's, it's weird because a lot of people, a lot of my friends have said to me, like, you've moved from Australia. Like you moved to America from Australia. You moved to it's Canada. Different. Now you're, now, and then you moved to tech. This is so different because every time I did all of those moves, I had nothing. I had mm-hmm. me and some money in my pocket. And that was it. This now I have a wife. I have two cats. I have a career. I have a, a life that I love. I have my house. You and have everything. You have something to lose. I have now. everything to lose. Mm-hmm. And it's terrifying. And I didn't ever, because yeah. I've moved so many times, I thought, yes, yeah, move again. But it wasn't until I hit that moment where I was supposed to call and say, let's do it, that I was like terrified. And that's the I first can, time I've ever felt that. I can give you a one up on that because last year, uh, toward, towards the beginning of the year, like January, like I had been working my normal nine to five. And then I had, I had been working in my studio outside of nine to five. So I had been working essentially like 60, 70 hour weeks pretty much. And I was so burnt out and I was very unhappy with, uh, the trajectory of, of my life. And I, and I quite remember like, this is, this is a bit of a low point here, but I remember I had such a bad day working at the phone shop. I went down the block down to Dan, Dan Murphy's, which is the good old bottle shop chain. I bought it. I, I bought I a Dan six Murphy's. Sorry. I love Dan Murphy's. I don't even yeah. drink alcohol and Dan Murphy's is great. <laughs> It's got nice vibes. So I bought a six pack of Budweiser and I drank it all in about 10 minutes. And I just, and I, I came back cause, cause I was working on songs that I didn't like producing. And I had been pigeon, I had pigeonholed myself into doing the job that I love for money that I was just throwing away on expenses and stuff. So then it was just kind of like not worthwhile. And I, I remember <clears> coming back to the apartment to Amber and I was like bawling my eyes out as, as we were assembling my son's bassinet. Cause like, this was only a couple months away from our son's arrival. And it's like, what the hell am I doing? Mm-hmm. And like, I was so unhappy living where we were living. Mm-hmm. And that was when I was like, okay, we need to move. And now retrospectively, it's like, I don't know if I made the right decision because it was, it was an emotional decision. And Amber and I were ready to go. It's just as, just as well as you were, but not that I'm trying to say don't leave texas yeah. but it was just like it was an emotional decision and i've gained nothing since coming to where we live now on the surf coast in australia we've been here for almost two years nothing mm-hmm. nothing at all i've got nothing to show for it nothing to gain other we're renting a nice house we're back to square one we don't have any savings plans we don't do, all i want to do is i want to go back home to the u.s which is going to be even more of a difficult decision too because as you said like you know not to say that moving from Texas uh, to PA is similar, but it is you're uprooting your entire life and you're taking you as you and Kim, or in my example, Amber and my son as a family unit and just, Mm -hmm. and just placing them somewhere else. It's like, okay, here you go. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah. That's scary. It's terrifying. You know, I mean, we don't, we don't have a kid, but you know, a reason why we don't have a kid is because we didn't, we didn't want to have one here. And yeah. it's another thing, like we're talking about moving and getting a dog and kids in the future. And it, it's, yep. it just became overwhelmingly terrifying. And like, I'm like, you know what, what, here's, here's this weird thing that split in my mind. It was like, I'm creating two timelines. I'm creating the timeline where we stay in Texas and the Multiverse. timeline where we're in PA and they are oh, yeah. so different. And it's yeah. like, in my, this is very extreme, I know, but this is like how I was having a full anxiety attack. I was like, what if we move here and we die? <laughs> and I know that's super extreme, but I was like, what if something happened? What if a car crash? It's true. What if we it's die true. on a PA road? You know? But then again, what if we don't and we stay in Texas? What if we die there? Like, that's like mm-hmm. the extreme case, but that's my my only way of really ex- saying we're creating two timelines where we're going to have two very different lives and which one's yeah. going to be the better one. Oh, yeah. They call it a turning point, right? Yeah. yeah. it's It was intense. And it, 
I think if it was the house, we would have been far more okay with it. But we didn't really even get a chance while we were in PA to enjoy PA. So having to make that call of, so do you like it here? I don't know. I've seen like 20 houses and I think I like some areas. But am I willing to uproot and change everything? Yeah. There are some nice areas in Pennsylvania. Like I literally, like I'm born in Pennsylvania, right? So like I lived at, went to high school there. Uh, you know, I, I played in, I played in shows like all around the state in my band days. Like I'm, I'm well aware of the area there and it is, it is a nice area, but it's different than Texas. You know what I mean? It's a mm-hmm. different lifestyle. That's where we uh, ultimately, we want to move. We have, we have decided yeah. by the way, I want yeah. Yeah, to say that in there that once we had time removed from it and we got to actually look back at what we saw and actually think about it without the stress of, are you buying this house? Are you buying this house? We were like, yeah. okay, that place was gorgeous and we loved everything about it. And then um, the two days we spent in New York with Bob and E and Scoot and Philip um, was awesome. And the fact that we got there in like an hour, hour and a half, and we were hanging out with our friends, we were creating content in Bob's studio. Like it was a blast and it, it really felt awesome to be around creative people and creating things somewhere really cool. And then realizing, man, we're like an hour and a half from here. I could leave our house at 8 a.m., be here before 10, hang out all day and get back before dinner. Like, that's insane. Um, Mm. And then, yeah, PA was gorgeous. And, you know, we started rolling out some other places just because New Jersey, New York, too cold to live, but also New Jersey, way too expensive. Delaware, too boring. Um, Mm. Maryland is actually fine. We would probably be happy there, but it's a little further away from everything. So we're like, you know what? Yeah, PA is, is, that's what we want. And we're going to go back in March, probably, and we're going to find, hopefully, the house and hopefully move in before July. I hope plan. that you find it. Honestly, I hope that um, I, ho- I hope that you, that you get what you're looking for. It might take you a little bit of time to get there. But the thing is, is like I, we've, we've mentioned this before, is like you have a certain lifestyle. Your, your career is on a certain trajectory. You want to you want to play into that. Yeah. And the same thing like now, I like I'm. This is ridiculous, but I'm only really taking my online persona seriously, right? Like I've, you know, I'm I'm finally putting in the effort. Like mm-hmm. I'm putting it. Like I've seen. I was going go to go. You're uploading. I was going to go to bed at nine o'clock now. last night. I stayed up till one. I, I was mm-hmm. doing thumbnails, YouTube videos, because it's like if I don't do it now, then when am I going to do it? Yeah. And if mm-hmm. I, you know, if I don't succeed now, when when will I succeed? That's the thing. Is like I I saw you hanging out with all the guys in New York City, and I was like, damn, I wish I was there. I and wish you were like. I, I genuinely I wish you I both wa- were there. I uh, want to be there yeah. hanging out with you guys. Like I I cannot tell you. It's all I think about. It's mm-hmm. all I think about is getting in a room with you guys and hanging out and, and making stuff together. Yeah. That is that oh. is all that's like that's the wavelength I'm on. Of course, like, I would of course love fan- to do this podcast in person one day. 100 percent It'll that's, happen. It'll that's happen. That's my goal, dude. And like, you know, I'm all or nothing when I when I go into things, right? You know, like I I I literally we moved from us to australia so i can pursue the band that i was in that you used to feature in your vlogs if you recall that Mm -hmm. um i came here to pursue that and make that a reality nothing ever happened although that we ended up on house hunters so that's a different story (laughs) um but like i'm 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 all or nothing man and like if i can if i can do that then i will do that but you have the option you have the opportunity to do that and play into your career now yeah. So I hope that you can find it and, and yeah. I, I can see that it will pay off for you. Cause I mean, look at the content that you made while you were there. I mean, we, we might leave oh, it was, here soon. It was some of the coolest stuff I've done. I mean, that commercial shoot was awesome. I don't know for if sure. anyone, oh, yeah. if you guys that watched was so good. it, but that was, that was so Great. much fun to shoot and it came out looking exactly how I wanted. Um, and then also just the video that Bob and I made was, I mean, that's one of the most fun videos on my channel now because I got to actually do it with someone in person. Like that's one thing my channel never gets to do is collaborate with other creators. Um, yeah. Because, you know, my my good friend Billy here, like we just have very different channels and our content doesn't exactly mesh. We help each other out shooting a lot, which is nice. But other than that, there's no one else here that I that I can work with. But I mean, uh, you used to be you used to be able to, to do that, but it's just, as you've gone in a different direction too, and you want to yeah. you want to play into that because it's again it's a career move, and that's important for you to to continue to grow and grow your brand. I mean, yeah. you're out there. You you went to flip in New York City to shoot a commercial for your signature Nintendo Switch grip. Like, who would have thought? You know, seven years ago when we met, that's pretty. It was pretty fun, actually. It was really. You fun. know what I mean? You know what like, sucks 
is I had a little vlog camera with me and I vlogged the whole thing to show you guys behind the scenes of making oh, that. Yeah. And uh, I didn't realize it was shooting in slow-mo the whole time with no audio. Oh my God. <laughs> we literally, <laughs> oh I kid you not, we filmed, Kim and I filmed for two or three straight days in New York. Like we vlogged everything, hours. And it was all in slow-mo with no audio. Oh my God, no. I know, I was very upset. <laughs> Bob and I, oh, so Bob, sorry. Scootish, and I actually talked about speeding the footage back up and then doing a commentary oh. track over the top because <laughs> there's nothing else that we could do. I mean, the, the footage is gone, but yeah, we shot behind the scenes of shooting the commercial um, and it was fun. I, I, you know, we went, uh, he shot it. He's a guy, guy with hair on Twitter. He actually works in TV. He does, uh, I think I've already said this, but he, he works with Guy Fieri, Fre Freri, whatever. Um, and he helped us shoot it. I was like, he's like, what do you want to shoot? And I'm like, well, Kim hasn't been here before. So let's shoot in the fun places. Let's shoot in Central Park. We'll shoot in Times Square. Um, and then we managed to hit a bunch of places around that. So we went to the Seinfeld restaurant because it's right next to the top of um, Central Park, which the Seinfeld restaurant is sick. It's like a diner with, well, it's a diner. So all, all diners, you know, Eric, but all yeah. diners in PA and stuff, I'm sure everywhere, they have all, all day breakfast. Mm. Um, so yeah, the Seinfeld restaurant does all day breakfast. So Bob and I got all day breakfast. Um, Kim got a stew, which was weird. Um, nice. that's fine. That, though. that is weird. And disco fries. They're like cheesy fries. Mm. Um, where else did we shoot? And then, you know, we're in New York. So Kim's obviously in the Disney store. We go to the M&M store, which fun fact, as Squidish told us, is the most visited place in Times Square. And Times Square is the most visited place like in the country or something. The most touristed place place in the country hmm. making I the m m store the most visited place in the country and also the only place in times square that manages to turn a profit really yep apparently every everything is so expensive there that the only reason most of the stores are there is just for like brand recognition and like the marketing they get for being there the m m store is the only one that can turn a profit i don't hmm. know how that makes sense but apparently scooters used to be a like guide tour in new york a guide so tour i believe him <laughs> a tour there guide, you know. sorry. <laughs> a guide tour. Hey, you know what? Speaking of big cities around the world. Yeah. There was, um, if you guys recall, a couple of episodes ago, I found out that we are huge in a certain country. Oh, I thought you, and I thought you were going to say in... Whoa. What? You good there, Derek? Uh, yep. What, I'm good. yep. What was that? <laughs> Just... Stuff, not, uh, you know, nothing. Something here. Uh, restarting and on. starting. What the yep, hell is happening? I don't know. That my, sound I think is my so USB triggering. Hub, I, think my, <laughs> I think my USB hub just restarted itself. I don't know what's going on. I don't, do you guys hear that live? I, I heard live. Well, yeah, Astros yeah. heard it. <laughs> That's my bad. Um, um, yeah, we actually, uh, we got a value viewer form, didn't we, Eric? Yes, we did. So it was value viewer form. 290, uh, it's, whatever, it doesn't matter. There's thousands of them, so, but we're, we're only There's up to like 200. Thousands and thousands. And uh, someone, I guess, listened to our episode where we found out that, how many people listen in Japan? It's like 0 0.4, and you said it was, I, you said it was like- hundred. Yeah, right, probably like 10. But one of them Five. actually, I mean, it is, it's a real statistic. So statistically speaking, one of those people would have heard the episode, even if it was such a low number. And one of them did. And they wrote in and they were said, hi, I'm one of your fans in Japan. And that's all they said. Uh, but we figured we just call them and say hi. We have nothing planned for this. It's about 11 a.m. in Japan. So they should be awake unless they're lazy. Um, yep. I have no idea why we're calling them other than to finish this circle. I, well, once once we go to McDonald's Tokyo and we have our meetup, we need we need somebody to plan it. You want to do a meetup right. in Japan? That's going to be we're doing it. We're doing a Japan. Very exciting. Uh, I believe Derek is trying to call them now. We did test the number earlier and it rang. That does not mean they will answer. I'll see if they replied to my email. I sent them. Actually, you should have a look. They did not. I mean, <laughs> they're not. Gonna, yes. They're not going to answer. This um, is going to be a, this is going to be a dead segment. Yeah, probably. If we were do if we were going to do a meetup in the U.S., I would probably pick Charles Entertainment Cheese as the meetup. Spot. This segment is deader than my neighbors would have been in that one house. Dead center of town. All right. I think they didn't pick up. 
All right. Well, that yeah. was fun. I, I did just try to call. I, I got a hold of a, a, a nice sounding Japanese lady uh, who I think said that the call could not be connected or, or was oh, not answered. An automated lady? Yeah. Okay. An automated lady. Yeah, it might have been a voicemail. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, so it rang, well, we but tried. then didn't ring. Yeah. Yeah, it, it rang, but it maybe we it need ended in Maybe error. we do need an area code. We weren't sure because the number they gave is like 20 digits long. So we thought they were nice and added the area code in for us, but maybe maybe we need further research there to actually call the number. Yeah, maybe so. I'll get my people onto it. Um. All right. Well, you said you had two things for the show today, Eric. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. I'll show one quick one, and I'll show another cool one. So I know you guys are into Nintendo stuff, right? And we don't we don't really we don't really delve into games here too much. But I did a, I did a I did a mod the other day, a partial mod on my on my Switch. Oh, I, no, I didn't mm-hmm. take the tweezies to the battery. Um, <laughs> Why not? I was, I was doing it. I was doing it. Well, <laughs> I thought it really kickstarts the battery. Yeah, it does. Um, actually, had Derek raid my stream, which was quite funny. So I I modded my Nintendo Switch. So have a look at here's a transparent okay, case. I've done and, that before. No, you haven't done this though. Have I not? Ooh, the front panel. I'm pretty sure it's also. Panel. If you if you've done the front panel, you've you've removed the screen. Maybe I didn't do the front panel. So I yeah. I bought I bought a bunch of uh, parts to mod my launch switch. And I was like, okay, yeah, well, sure, this should be easy, you know. But I didn't, I didn't realize until like I started doing it that I had to actually tear it all apart. Yeah. So I sat there with a hair dryer on the screen. Oh no! <laughs> Trying to take the screen off. Oh my god! I, I mean, I used to do that stuff for work anyway, but it was it was fun. It was a fun project to do. So I'm still working on the Joy Cons. I'm waiting for the the housing and stuff to okay. come. Okay. But I did thought, you, did I you, you break might, it? Like, or does it work? Oh, it works. It was fine. Okay. Yeah. That is so cool. I saw Eric as he was trying to put one of the Joy Cons back together, and that was uh, yeah, that's oh, a nightmare. That is actually was... pretty sick. I uh, I did change the the shells of the Joy Cons and the back of my Switch, but yeah, I know you you got to take that that screen off for the front. I was like, nah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. cannot be trusted. <laughs> so the other thing I have to show is a couple of days after our last stream, uh, <sighs> I got the heads up that my Kickstarter vinyl is was in. So here's, oh, here's my Kickstarter vinyl, yes. and the blood red, Check the blood red, transparent. Yeah, I love that. Look at that. Oh, that is gorgeous. That, you know what that reminds me of? Weirdly, it's given me like nostalgia for like a bowling ball, for like an old yeah. school bowling alley with like the the clear red balls. I can. Appreciate oh yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So in that. the in the center insert is um, hand drawn artwork by Super Derek himself. Oh, that's look cute. at that. And yeah. I have um, on the about the artist. It says. Streams the Wooden Eric show with his friend Woodhawker from Beat 'em Ups. Nice. So there I'm you go. included. Of course you are. <laughs> I mean, I did I give you like 200 for the Kickstarter. So. Oh yeah, you did. <laughs> I should yeah, get a it. special mention. <laughs> and your your name is on the the list of 113 people there. So nice. I picked up 160 vinyl from Zenith Records in Melbourne two weeks ago. They did a fantastic job. I'm I'm really happy with that. So th- those will start sending out uh, early next year. So you guys got one on the way. When they finally get in the post. When do I get mine? Uh, sooner than everybody else. Yes. You get because you know because you got you know got to send all that. I got to send wood from beat 'em ups. I was gonna say, are yeah. we gonna get them before or after the valued viewer forms? That doesn't matter. You <laughs> get them <laughs> before or after the beat 'em ups grips finally ship. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I heard there's a bit of a delay on those. Yeah, I was gonna maybe talk about it, but I don't think I'll get into it. I uh, oh yeah, and they just keep getting delayed because of the factory, and it sucks because. Satisfy has no control over it, but I have accidentally become the face of the company with my grips <laughs> because I'm like the only one that people know that, you know, the only the only face to put to the name, right? Sure. Especially when it is my grip too. So a lot of people are like, I'm going to cancel my order soon. What if they don't get shipped out? So I'm like, I don't blame you. It's been like, <laughs> it's been like a month. Why are you telling me? Well, um, it must just be because of your your alleged net worth. Is that correct? Well, oh. let's, not, let's not skip stories too quickly. <laughs> I do want to say that uh, I really... I just got so much to talk I know, about. I know. <laughs> I really appreciate everyone that has bought a grip. It means the like actual world to me if you do. And I'm sorry they have been delayed. Um, I didn't realize that I was announcing on Twitter that they were getting delayed when I put the tweet out. I thought that had just been updated somewhere. Um, and then I caught some flack for like, wait, December... Yeah, it's literally just COVID stuff. 
Like, I don't really know what's going on. Um, I will say that we had to wait a long time to get the first runs to approve them because we didn't mm-hmm. want to just go into production without approving. So that took a long time to ship because of COVID. <laughs> like yeah. everything's taking forever. And then to save time because they're taking so long to ship, they're actually going to skip shipping them all to California to the warehouse of Satisfy. And they're just going to send them out straight from Hong Kong, which because they're doing that, they're taking a huge hit in, in, in shipping which wow. um, they're doing that to try and get people their grips as soon as possible. They're doing the best they can to try and get them there before Christmas. Or, That's pretty nice, though. Yeah, they really uh, they really are doing what they can. Um, Trying to make it right. I haven't got mine yet either. I mean, the one that I have for the video was the first run print, and the back, like the grips, aren't textured because they're not finished. So I don't even have the actual thing yet, let alone no one's seen it yet, but they come in a box, and we designed the box too. And I, I haven't even seen that yet. Um, but I do have my case now, which, by the way, thank you so much for buying that if you did. Um, but that's a little frustrating too because we I, I pushed for the case because so many people were asking for the case. I was like, I want to do a case. And Satisfy were like, we probably shouldn't do a case. Cases don't really sell. And I was like, yeah, but look how many grips I've sold. If we do a case, everyone's at, and he's like, I know it feels like everyone's asking, but it's going to be a logistical nightmare to make a case. But I'm like, look, we're going to go make a commercial in New York. The grip's already out. Like, why would we make a commercial for something that's already out? Imagine that cool moment of being like, look at the case now in the commercial. And I sold him on that. So he made the case. (laughs) But what that means is, we had to make the bundle. And if you already bought the grip, you had to cancel your grip order, which people had ordered like a month ago and they've been waiting, cancel something they've been waiting for to order another bundle because there's no way of doing like an upgrade. That's just not like an option in their website. And to buy the case separately, it's not like the the money it costs and the profit margin on a case is like nothing. So that's like a nothing sale. It's nothing. It's, it's, it doesn't make logistical sense to sell the case separately. So I'm really sorry that that was such a nightmare. Um, but we did the best we could. And if you know, you were asking for a case, you can get one. And if you, I, I kind of want to get a case. I, I haven't, I haven't decided yet. They're very I really nice. Don't take my switch anywhere. The inside is so soft and yellow. It's like a Muppet. Oh, it looks so cool. I actually, I, when I saw that, I was like, dang it, I got to buy one actually. Yeah. It's so I really went and, cool. and I tried to, and I tried to buy one. Uh, and I, and I, and I got past the checkout only to realize that it defaulted to white instead of the beat em ups one. And yeah. Like, that what? happened to a lot of people. And they had to and cancel had to, their order. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm working on, on Sorry. revising that order. <laughs> I don't know why that happened. I think they fixed it now, but yeah, it kept defaulting to white for a lot of people, but their support team is on every, and right now they're on standby because they know they have to have people cancel the grip to get the bundle. So they're, I might they're, do that then. They're there and waiting. Easy, switch over. It's not going to change the time you're waiting at all because it's literally all going to get shipped out at the same time. It, it, it's just waiting for that to happen. I have to do it though because I want to get the thing, and you've done the thing, and you've I know. added the extra thing, and then it's now a complete thing. And then if I, I don't know. get the both both of the things, then I don't. I only have half. They look so. You're good thinking like a collector. <laughs> they look so good. Um. Yeah, my net worth is uh 1.5 million. How do you guys feel about that? Uh, I you're it's you're worth more than that to me, buddy. <laughs> it's priceless, man. I it's saw priceless. as we were going live, somebody wrote that in the chat. Because mm-hmm. it was in my last video with Bob, we uh, we started talking about uh, how we could afford to do a five hundred dollar video this time and spend five hundred <laughs> on each other because we're these rich, successful YouTubers. And then I was like, I wonder what it says about our net worth. And both were very wrong. Let me look up Wolf Den. I can't remember what his was. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. So it says Bob's is. Two hundred thousand dollars, but then it says mine is one point five million. What? Who decides that? I don't know who decides it or like where they calculate. Because I said in the video too, like that would mean that assessing, I guess, by sub count, like one dollar per sub. But then I look at Wolfdance and he's got like almost seven hundred thousand subs. So how do they calculate his to be lower? 
My guess is that they're talking about the net worth, including like the the ownership of the YouTube channel itself and its future production possibilities, maybe. Like, I don't think like maybe they're thinking about like, oh, you could have sold your YouTube channel for one point five million dollars at this point or something like that. Maybe. Maybe. It's all over the the place, though. Because I don't think they're talking about stuff you own because nobody has access to to that information, right? Yeah, I don't know how they would. Like, I'm looking at all these different places, though. Like, okay, so this site that Wolf Den, it's uh, Stat Smash or Stat Smash says Wolf Den's 200,000. It says I'm 476,000, which is much more comparable with Wolf Den's at that point. So that site thinks I'm worth half a million, but... Net worth spot is the one that thinks I'm worth an estimated one million dollars, but considering additional sources, it could be closer to one point three million. Additional what additional sources is what I'd like to know. And then YouTubers.me thinks I'm five hundred thousand. So yeah, I don't this is it's surreal though. It's surreal to be able to Google your name in general. But to have one of the recommended things come up be Wood Hawker or Beat 'em Up's net worth, and then have people discussing how much they think you're worth as like a That's creator, as a brand. Like it's on one hand, it's kind of cool because I look at 1.3 million and I'm like, "That's sick." Someone thinks I'm worth over a million dollars. I wish I had over a million dollars. But on the other hand, it gives a really wrong in opinion. But then also, mm-hmm. it's like. What does net worth mean? Like, like you said, it's how much my brand or my estate maybe yeah, I might be worth. So, if I was to sell my brand, maybe I don't have that much money. But if I was mm-hmm. to sell that to someone, it could be worth that to an advertiser or someone willing to destroy my channel. Yeah, like if you were acquired by a a, a big corporation <laughs> and they wanted out. to use. Yeah, if Nintendo okay. bought the beat 'em ups brand. I like that. So everything I've built up to this point, if I was to sell to a corporation, I'd get over a million dollars. Yeah. That's an interesting question to ask creators then. Like, would you sell for your average or like like estimated net worth? Cause I mean, like, well, I don't want to lose what I do by any means, but if I could sell beat 'em ups for one point three million, <laughs> like could I what no. could I keep creating though? Could I just make another channel and and tell people to sub to me there and start building it back up? Like what's the rules? Probably there's probably a non compete that would be accompanied with a lot of that sort of stuff. I don't yes, think so. Because I, I could retire I'm, on one point three million. <laughs> you would think so. One point three million ain't as much as it used to be though, man. That's true. So I'm uh I'm scrubbing some numbers here. I'm I'm three subscribers away from three thousand, man. I could probably get myself a good old twenty bucks. I can have a Chinese dinner tonight, man. Like honestly, like I wouldn't that's, say no to that. That's a that's a night of Burger King, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sell your channel for a night of Burger King. Done it before. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> let's let's do a poll in chat. Would you sell your YouTube channel for one point three million? <laughs> Yes or no, Stephen? Can you set that poll up? Well, you know, you can you can drop the games thing, and you could just be a personality without games. I have a second channel. That's what I'm saying. Can I can I just do the Woodhawker channel and just continue my legacy there? Can I still stream on Twitch? Because I mean, my Twitch people are super nice. I could probably get by on Twitch. You could do the just chat, <laughs> just chatting, no games, no nothing. I would if I if I wasn't doing YouTube videos, I would legit stream full time, like eight hours a day, Monday to like Friday, and I would just make that my career. Can I do that? You'd be better off. I mean, I've probably. never made a I'd probably, I'd probably be better off. <laughs> I'd yeah, probably be better would. off just quitting YouTube, period, and doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. There ain't nothing on YouTube for me financially. Like, at least if I stream, I don't know, under under 10 times a, a minimum a month, I at least make over the threshold. So I make something. Oh, this poll is so close. So vote in chat. Because it's very close, and I want to get a better representation here, but we're about halfway through the vote, and 46% say yes. Oh, it's changing. 42% say yes. 58% say no. But it's it's still very close. Now, Now, chat, really put yourself in the position. Like, Don't sit there and be like, don't sell out, bro. Don't sell out or whatever. Really put yourself in the position of like 1.3 million just like that. If you here's, were to sell. here's 
Here's one argument, I think, for why you shouldn't. And that's because there tends to be this sort of logarithmic growth pattern to a lot of successful YouTube channels. Like a, a year ago, you had a million subscribers. This year, you've got 1.5, right? Mm. Next year, you'll probably have, you know, 2.25. I see what you're saying. You know, hold on to that, you right. know, because okay. you're going to continue to appreciate more quickly, right? Build it up until it's it's looking like I might be done, or like and maybe then, maybe I'm done, or maybe my channel's suffering. Yeah, and then and just then, sell it to to <laughs> T-Mobile <laughs> for three million dollars. <laughs> Chat said sixty percent said no, but it is very split. Yeah, it's almost a hundred people voted in that one. That's almost you know, half. And depending on where you are, one point five million is enough to retire on. But in, in some Texas, places, yeah, that that's almost enough to afford a house in Seattle, in California. Yeah, <laughs> almost or Seattle. Enough. That's monthly rent in New York City, man. Mm -hmm. For the record, I don't think anyone would actually buy my channel for one point three. Like maybe I'm wrong, and some big Goliath company would be interested. I don't see why. I don't. I don't know where that statistic came from i can tell you i don't have that much money otherwise kim and i would not as have been as stressed out as we were <laughs> a couple weeks ago yeah. while looking at houses that, um, that stress over the 200 dollars wouldn't have been there right <laughs> well i don't think anyone ever wants to lose 200 dollars for no. nothing but yeah that was definitely um upsetting <laughs> i don't know code man beat em -ups, code beat em ups for 30 percent off the uh, the net worth of your channel so I mean, people people drink two hundred bottle two hundred dollar bottles of sh you know champagne for for fun at a certain wealth. You know, can I tell you actually a funny story about the trip? Yes. Um, so Keeve, very nice guy, and he's a realtor. Um, and you know, houses over there are a little bit more expensive in general than houses over here, obviously. But you can tell that he's probably sold a few houses. Like he was, he was kind of fancily dressed, and he knew who I was. He like looked up my channel and everything. So I think even he had an air of this guy's worth $1.3 million. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole time I was there, he was like recommending places for Kim and I to eat. And they were all these five-star Michelin restaurants. Like he kept saying this name like Steven Star. And I guess we like looked it up and he's some like food critic who goes around. And if you are rated by Steven Starr. It's apparently one of the best restaurants in the city or something. And he kept recommending, like, you have to go to, like, whatever. You know, some fancy, I can't even pronounce it name for dinner tonight. Take Kim, go out on a date. And, and like, Kim and I, Kim's wearing, like, her Nirvana shirt and her, like, <laughs> ripped jeans. I'm in, like, my just sweater I found on the side of the road. I'm like, yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> you're and you're then, humble. And then we end up just eating, like, some, like, dive bar or, like, diner or, like, some, like, weird pub. And the next day he's like, so, where'd you guys eat last night? Like, trying to get the down low on the hot place <laughs> we went. And we were like, oh, we just ate at Denny's. <laughs> and every time he was like, I I can recommend you somewhere to eat. I'm like, no, it's okay. <laughs> like, we're fine. Even Man, if I that... was a millionaire, I wouldn't oh. not go for Denny's. Like, it's just... I yeah, know, you I just eat more. <laughs> I mean, more. Obviously, uh. where, where I'm at now is a very different place to where I was at like five years ago as far as like the way the channel is going, how much revenue it makes and all of that. But Kim and I, just we have not changed. Like, and I don't know what it would take for that to happen. Like, we still eat cheap. We still dress from things that Kim buys me at Goodwill when she's shopping with her mom. Like, mm -hmm. I and two hundred dollars to me is a lot of money. Still, I don't want to lose that. As it should be on a fee. So you kind of reminded me of this time uh, that I was. I lived in Omaha for a short while, and Amy and I were like, "Let's go try out this uh, this restaurant that's like across the street." You know, it's Omaha just Omaha Steaks. Uh, no, it wasn't Omaha Steaks, but I think they did have. They, I think actually they did have <laughs> Omaha Steaks. So we, so we went into this place. We didn't know what it was. It was just called Porter, or not, not Porter's. It was called um, Mahogany. Okay, and it was a steakhouse, and we're like, "Yeah, I want some steak." So we go in there, and they've got. Uh, well, we walk in and we're just wearing stuff from what we were wearing in like t-shirts and stuff, like what you're talking about. It's mm -hmm. like that sort of thing that you were mm -hmm. talking about there, Wood, where we walked in and the, there's a guy, the waiter in a tuxedo sits us at a table and we're like, wait a second. We, I think we've gotten in over our heads here. <laughs> so he hands us, he hands us these menus. And again, we're just like, it's, it's like a black tie restaurant basically. And we're in t-shirts and stuff and jeans mm -hmm. and uh, they've got, anyways, so 
we're like, oh, we're we're stuck. We have to order something here. So we ended up like ordering like I got a, a cowboy steak and a, and a Caesar a salad. Menu. You have to order your Caesar salad on the side, like extra because because the steak comes as a steak. Like that's the kind of restaurant we're talking about here. And uh, so we, you know, they give us the bread and, you know, we're cutting the bread and then it like gets crumbs all over the, the white tablecloth. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and and in between that they come out with like this golden uh this golden comb and they comb the 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 I'm not kidding the crumbs off this golden tablecloth <laughs> <laughs> it's just the most ridiculous over the top experience that I've ever had at going to one of these restaurants. Uh, Amy accidentally spilled some of her, her wine on the nice clean tablecloth. <laughs> just covered just messing it up. the place up. <laughs> she covered it up with a napkin. Oh my God. <laughs> and, and that's how we spent $200 unexpectedly oh, uh, wow. one night at a steakhouse that we had no business being at. So, but you're, you're talking about just showing up at some random you know, really nice restaurant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that happened to me. And it was a it was absolutely <laughs> as awkward as you would expect. Like the waiter, I think, knew what was going on. <laughs> 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 he had this look in his eye, like, yeah. Uh it's it's uh yeah. <laughs> I uh I actually have a similar not too similar, but I have a story like that. But I'll say that um for the trip, because I knew I was shooting the commercial, I bought some nice clothes for the shoot. I wanted to be oh, wearing you look some sharp nice too. yeah. The, the second day didn't even make it into the cut yet. And I was even sharper that day. So I was wearing some nice clothes while we were driving around too, which probably confused him. But uh, anyway, yeah, my my quick story of that is when I, I went to Reno, uh, the casinos and stuff, um, we, we went out to dinner and like I was taken out to dinner by um, my friend's dad. And he had a lot of money and I did not. And he took us to dinner to like one of these really, really fancy places like you were explaining. And like, mm -hmm. I think it, I didn't feel weird about how I was dressed, even though I was severely underdressed because you could tell that like, I was like the younger one that was brought by the guy. But I was looking at the menu and I didn't know what any of it was. Like it was like baffling to me. And this was at a <laughs> point where I hadn't even like expanded my palate past like mm -hmm. just burgers. So I saw there was a burger on the menu and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll get the burger. There was a bunch of things on it. I didn't know what they were, but I saw burger. Then it finally comes out and uh, there's this big like s slimy thing on it. And I'm like, what is that? And I forget how it's pronounced, but th the dad was like, that's like fagua or something. Oh no, fagua. It was like a big thing of duck, like duck fat or something. <laughs> like, I don't even know. I, st I still don't know what it was. But it was like <sighs> flappy and juicy and whatever. So oh, no, I'm dude. sat in this five star restaurant and I pull apart the burger. I take <laughs> off the duck and I like slam it to the side and then I eat the <laughs> burger. And then at the end, the waiter comes out and uh, he comes out with the chef. And I'm not kidding. He comes out with the chef and he oh and the God. waiter goes, so I don't know if you know. But that burger was actually new on the menu. And you are the first person that has ordered it. I am not, <laughs> I am not even making this up. It sounds like a lie. <laughs> and he was like, you are the first person that's ever ordered it. And the chef would like to know what you thought of it. And I didn't like it. <laughs> it's not all it was cracked I up to be. <laughs> didn't know what to say. So I, not really thinking, said the first thing that came to my mind and said it was dry. <laughs> <laughs> and the chef looks so upset and offended he was like what do you mean it was dry and i was like i don't know it just didn't really have any sauce on it and he's like did you not eat the whatever the far wild and i was like no and he's like well that's what's supposed to give it the moisture it's supposed to like that's what gives it like the not dry and i was like oh well i didn't want that <laughs> <laughs> and he just waddled back into the kitchen. I was so embarrassed. I was so unbelievably embarrassed. Oh my God. And that's my story of that. There you go. <laughs> I still have not eaten oh. duck and I still will not eat duck. I don't it like is, it. It's really good, actually. I mean, if you get like the Peking duck or something someplace, that's really good. Yeah, but no, like whatever I... that thing was. Yeah, yeah. It was like, like foie gras. Yeah, and like no. squishy. 
Yeah, that sounds that's like duck liver foie gras. It's oh like, yeah, it's it is. duck liver, isn't it? Yeah, Ugh. like pureed duck liver or something. How do yeah, you say it? Foie gras. Foie gras. Foie gras. Foie gras. Oh, foie gras. Well, you can <laughs> foie gras. <all. laughs> we don't. We don't. Yeah. We don't dabble in those fancy restaurants. I remember one time Amber and I went into one of those, and we just asked for some water for the table, and the girl comes over and and has this nice water bottle and pours it over her arm which has like a napkin on it or something like into the cups. And I'm like, we got to get out of here. Like I'm like street rats compared to like what they normally dine in here. Like I need to leave. So she faked a phone call. And then I left shortly after. Cause it's like, I don't, this is not my vibe, man. Like a Denny's I'd rather Denny's over charcuterie. We very rarely left a restaurant. I don't think we've ever walked in somewhere fancy and left. Cause it was fancy. I know we walked into a cafe, a cafe that was here in um, Texas at one point. And it smelled like a toilet, like an actual toilet. Like it was disgusting. We sat down, ordered coffee. And I, I was like, I can't, I can't eat with this smell. And Kim was like, me either. So we just put $5 on the table and walked out. But I can't think of a time we, there was one place in PA we went to that was really fancy. I mean, we, we were a little underdressed. Uh, it was just near a house we looked at. It was an Italian place, but everyone in there was very Italian and dressed very nicely. Like they, Looked like they should have been on the Real Housewives of whatever TV show. <laughs> like they had all the accessories and the gold and the jewelry. Like it was, it was pretty cool, honestly. And we were, we were dressed relatively nice, so we didn't feel too out of place. But I think everyone was looking at us like, I'm not Italian. It felt like it was an Italian restaurant, but it felt like somewhere that like the Italian community goes and not so much like the random people from in town. You know what I mean? Well, if anybody had anything to say, you can be like, oh, well, I'm, I'm an influencer. I should have actually, I should have been like, do you know that I am worth $1.3 million? You should not. <laughs> you should flaunt that. Be looking at me like that. You should go into like a, a fancy restaurant dressed in t-shirt, whatever, like, like Derek did. And uh, just say, if, if you get any looks, like, by the way, uh, my net worth, Google it. You know what? Sometimes I, I do feel kind of like, I, f- I think it's funny, but like a couple of examples are like when I, when I went to uh, get a car the first time, um, and I'm pretty young and I was like going, I mean, I guess I'm relatively young and I was going in to buy a new car um, and like no one wanted to talk to me. And like, like when they finally did, they were like kind of giving me the runaround. Like they didn't think I was actually going to buy anything or be serious about it. And it wasn't until like they asked for like my credit score or whatever that they were like, oh, okay, Mr. Hawker, let's uh, get to work mm-hmm. here. And then so I would yeah. just say, I'll take my business elsewhere. I probably should like have. Trash, I'll, I'll just walk out. But the other thing is like, sometimes when I go to Kroger at like 1 a.m. and I'm like in my pajamas and I look like hell, I have like this long hair, you know, and I feel like they probably have to deal with some riffraff around that time. And I'm like hanging around like an aisle trying to find something. And I feel like I'm, <laughs> I'm getting like looked at like securities walking like up and down my aisle a lot. I'm like, dude, I can afford the candy bar. It's chill. You know what? <laughs> Dude, that, I rem- that, <laughs> go ahead. Go you, you go ahead. You go ahead. Derek. Uh, it reminds me of the time that we had to buy a, an air mattress at your place with you, Wood. This is a big group effort to all go out to the store to buy the air mattress. You remember that story mm-hmm. a little bit there? I don't remember the story. I remember us all waiting at the register for an hour because someone tried to get cash out of the, the automated <laughs> teller thing and they didn't have any money and they had to refill it. Yep, there was that. Uh, but I just remember like being like, oh, like just having that feeling of being a riffraff, you know, in a group of other YouTubers who were just out trying to buy yeah. an air mattress together. It, you know, it felt very riffraffy. <laughs> <laughs> yep, felt like a mall rat. <laughs> so that that reminds me, um, I whenever I go to the self checkout at Woolworths, because that's what we do down here in Australia, mate. Um, I always bring my bags with me. I, you know, I've got my, it's either my bags are underneath the stroller. If I bring my son with me, we go out to the shops. He loves to go to the supermarket with data uh, or just by myself. I hate when I go to the self checkout, I can be the only person in the self checkout and the attendant that, you know, usually, you know, monitors or whatever will just casually stroll and stand next to me. It's like, am I doing something wrong? Mm-hmm. Like, are you targeting? You're targeting me. I'm being profiled. I feel like Every I get time. profiled sometimes. <laughs> it's like, what's wrong with me? Just because I got a funny accent doesn't mean I'm going to steal anything. Like, come on. There was actually this I mean, one, one lady at the, um, <laughs> there was one lady at the, those self checkout areas the other day. I think Kim and I were like checking out. It was Billy and I, I think maybe, I don't know. But she was like really like h- hovering over me for a while. And she leans in it. like almost to my ear and goes, hi, how you going? And I was like, 
good. Thank you. And I really thought she was like sussing me out. But then she went over to Billy and went, hi, how you going? <laughs> and then went to like every other customer in the area, leaning right into their ear. Hi, how you going? Oh my God. It was really weird. <laughs> Anyway, I want to quickly talk about, I just want to see how everyone, what, what you did for Thanksgiving before we wrap this up. What did you do, Derek? I ate a one chip challenge. Oh, God. What, the, what is that? that? It's, uh, it is a, a spicy food endeavor uh, where you are to eat uh, one, one chip. Uh, I think it might, the brand was like Paki, P-A-Q-U-I or something. Um. Uh, I can look it up, but it's, oh, it is devious, uh, in its design. And I immediately regretted everything. It was terrible. I had turkey and some green beans. I don't know what's going over there in Kansas for the yeah. Thanksgiving. Yeah, I did the, the, yeah, yeah. Here's, here's what the chip looks like. Uh, it comes in a coffin, a little cardboard coffin. And, uh, at first it was fine. I, I ate it all just. And I was chewing it. It tasted terrible, by the way. I don't zero out of ten. Do not recommend. Uh, and then, and then immediately following that, it uh, felt like the worst throat sore throat I've ever had in my entire life. And it lasted for about ten or fifteen minutes while I started hiccuping. And I was like, "Oh my god, am I going to throw up? Is this going to? Is that going to happen?" My whole family was like. Like it was a planned thing where like my whole family was going to do this. My dad, my sister, we were all going to, we we're all going to try one of these one chip Wait, challenge things. How many things. did you get? There were five of them total. Okay. I didn't get them. My brother-in-law did. And how many He's were a, eaten? Two. One by me, <laughs> one by my sister. And then a third one went uneaten by my dad and by my brother-in-law who were like kind of looking at us and they're like, I don't think I want to How did that. your sister <laughs> handle it? Uh, about the same that I did, except, well, probably a little better than I did, actually, truth be told. But, okay, so first impressions were really bad. I tweeted about it as like, don't do this. Just don't even. Second impressions happened the first time I went to the restroom following. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. Just, no. Whoever from, designed, from whoever one designed that. It, from one Ooh. ship, you had a bad bathroom experience? Yes. Hmm. My God, dude. This thing... I mean, it wouldn't is, that just be in and out? Like, I mean, I'm sure it's spicy for a second, but it's a chip. No. <laughs> it just, it, it, infected, it no. infected your entire bowel. What, are you, are you agreeing to take on the one chip challenge? Not at all, no. I'm questioning yeah, you about that. your bowel movement. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't a bowel movement. I was just, because I was also drinking at the time, so I had to run to the restroom. Mm. And, I mean, I had washed my hands previous, but there was definitely a sensation I do not, Ever oh, want to feel again. you did what oh. you did what I did. It was at the icy hot thing. You did the icy no, no, hot. No, 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 I didn't. I washed my hands prior. It was just hot. It, <laughs> I don't know exactly what happened, but but you I did was what I did. I don't think it happened that way. <laughs> what do you mean it didn't happen that way? Uh, that's all. I'm, that's that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> no, it definitely so that did happen that way. Unless you're trying so, to say something else. You're gonna have to tell us off air. Wait, okay, then, I guess, no, I need to know. We need everyone needs to know. Did you? Did your pee hurt? Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> my God. <laughs> okay. So your pee pee didn't hurt. Your pee hurt. I mean, <laughs> Richard it, hurts. The first one hurt. The second. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Is that is yeah. like a warning for that on the box? I don't know. I, I, because it might be I a separate issue. <laughs> we can we can look this up. I think no no no, it's not a separate <laughs> issue because that was a one and done. What's the um, chip called? It's called Pakui, uh, P A Q U I. The one chip challenge: Carolina Reaper plus scorpion pepper. Inside one extremely hot tortilla chip. Okay, I typed in one chip challenge and then the word P and burning P came up right away. <laughs> yes. That's okay. Hold first on a second. Side effect. There's a Reddit post. This is happening as we speak, is what this Reddit post said. So, okay, the chip arrived, and then it got hotter. When I ate it, my eyes weren't tearing up, um, blah, blah, blah. A little while ago, I had to pee. I could say this is where it began, but we all know that when I ate the chip, I noticed a warming sensation in my nether regions. Does this track? Yes. Okay. 
And then, like my mouth, the burning gets more intense. I leave yes. the bathroom and start Googling if spicy foods can make your pee burn. <laughs> it turns out fire pee is a thing. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, you know what makes this worse? I don't, I don't dare tell my husband. So your sister probably went through the same thing. I Warming brought this upon myself. Yeah, it was intense. So I so, sit here on Reddit and wonder when the fire crotch will go away. <laughs> 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 oh God. It was rough. It was it was tough going that night. And that was last night, by the way. And so you're still And you're still I told it? you, I told you well last did night. I not, last did night I was not, Saturday. It's been like I three know. days since Thanksgiving. We did this we did our Thanksgiving last oh, okay. night. Okay. And uh, and I did mention that I was planning to join after I finished driving home today, mm -hmm. joining the chat mm -hmm. for this. Yes. The, Wait, the, you the driving show. to the doctor? No, but you, I told you I was suffering yes. some intestinal discomfort. Oh yeah, that right. Delayed. De it, oh. It's still mm. going on. Okay. It's right. still bad. It is twenty four hours Have later. Have you checked on your sister? <laughs> She's fine. Okay. I mean, she'll. She, I'm fine. She's probably fine. I'll do it. Send me one. It doesn't seem like you're fine. I'll though. do one on like the next just... podcast if you send it. Oh, okay. no, you won't. No, I won't. I, you know what? Actually, <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, actually, no, I, I refuse to send you one. Whoever designed that was a complete jerk. Like, let me tell you, don't. That's it. That's just a jerk. I'm not yeah, doing it. Don't. Mm -mm. Okay. Well, that was your Thanksgiving, apparently. Eric, did you do anything? <laughs> no, not really. That's I, uh... You didn't follow any traditions over there in Australia? Well,. My in-laws invited us over for a, a Thanksgiving thing on Friday. Did they do that Friday for night? you because it's you or do they celebrate Thanksgiving? No, they did it for me before because because it's me and I'm like, That's I nice. haven't had Thanksgiving properly since That's like nice. 20. Did you do it? Yeah, we just went over there. It wasn't like a proper Thanksgiving okay. thing. It was just like a, a, a lamb roast. Well, they, they probably didn't really know what to do, to be fair. Uh, well, and uh, Amber made pumpkin pie. Oh, that's cute. So she she does a pumpkin pie every year. Okay. Last year I did like I did, we, I did the whole spread and everything. I was like in the kitchen for eight hours. I didn't have time to do that this year. No. So this year, yeah. I, I, this year feels different. This year hit different. I don't know why. Honestly, like once it comes to once it once it rounds the corner, the year rounds the corner to Thanksgiving and then into the stretch into Christmas. That's just when I just I don't care. Like I'm not. I don't get into holidays anymore. My Christmas spirit is gone. Oof. Like just, you know what I mean? Like I'm just, I, th I think that'll bleak. change if you come back and start having those cold Christmases, but yeah, when, when, sure. when fall starts hitting and the leaves actually change and you're drinking the pumpkin spice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. That's uh, but believe me, I, I, I want that. And it's like, you know, it's like everybody has a Christmas. Yay. We're with our family. And then here I am by myself, like on the other side of the world. It sounds bleak, but I mean, it is what it is. So it's, this is the reality that I chose. So, but I'm excited <laughs> if I can get back to the U S and change that, that'd be great. Yeah, I feel bad for you because I feel like you're stuck kind of in the same place I am, but maybe in like mm -hmm. a bit more of a dire situation because it's a country away and yes. you don't really know how you're going to pull it off or if it even makes logistical sense. And I do feel bad because yep. uh, I don't, I, I wouldn't be coping very well if I was stuck in your position. Yeah, it's, it's funny because my, um, my little sister-in-law asked me the other day, she's like, do you miss your parents? Do you ever see your parents? Do you call your parents? I'm like my God, like this little girl is, is aware of like this mm -hmm. existential crisis that I have that I haven't seen my family in years. You know what I mean, but let me just preface, don't feel bad for me. You know what I mean? Like this is my decision. This is my bed and I'm lying in it. But I'm ready to change the sheets, man. Like I'm ready, yeah. to, ready to go. <laughs> no, I do feel bad a bit, yeah. especially right now because, you know, I want to get home and see my family. It's been two years, but COVID. Yeah, I know. And I mean, I just can't, I can't get home even to visit them. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, well, my Thanksgiving was good. I, uh, I'm, gl I'm glad it was, it was different. Um, since I've been here with Kim, the last four or five Thanksgivings have all been the same. We go to the farm. Um, I mean, she was there at the farm for the first couple and, and, or maybe the first one. And then the rest, you know, we drive back down cause we moved out together. Um, and everyone would come from her family, obviously not mine. Um, but like her grandparents and her mom lived there. So all like the, the kids, there was like three daughters and then, you know, they brought their families. And, but, uh, as we've said a couple times, um, you know, the situations have changed and, uh, because her grandparents aren't here anymore, no one came down. So, mm -hmm. um, Kim's mom came over and it was just me, um, Kim and Kim's mom. And then Billy came over because 
Billy's mm. family, I think, went down to see family in Austin and Billy didn't want to go because he hates traveling, which is fair. He's also working on his movie. So yeah. I invited him over and it was the four of us. And uh, Kim and her mom cooked pretty much everything. I helped. I made the green bean casserole because it's my favorite. Mm. Um, I also made a sugar-free, low-calorie apple pie because Ooh, nice. I love it. It's 70 calories a slice and full of protein. Um, I managed to get one slice and then Billy ate literally the entire pie. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he said it was the best pie he's ever had and even better than like the actual pumpkin pie and pecan pie that we had. So wow. I have to make wow. another one now because I only got one slice. Um, but that's fine. I told him he could have it. He loved it. Um, yeah, we did the whole thing. We had turkey, we had sweet sweet potato casserole, we had uh, you know biscuits, gravy, mashed potato, the whole the whole shtick. It was good. It was cute. But then I gotta say, the most upsetting thing about this year is uh, Black Black Friday, which I thought was going to be a thing again. Probably good that it's not. But uh, Billy and I, every year except last year because of COVID, but every year we done it like three or four years in a row. We go out after Thanksgiving and we go to like Best Buy. And we go to the mall and we drive around. The shops are open till like midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. And we, we hit those Black Friday sales on Thursday night. But we drove out at like 7 o'clock and everything was closed. Like everything. Best it's Buy not a thing anymore. Best Buy closed at 6. Um, GameStop we managed to get to because they closed at 9. But yeah, Black Friday, I mean, I guess because of COVID, but they just they didn't stay open late. And actually everywhere just stayed closed for Thanksgiving. Um, and then I think Friday they were probably open normal hours, but who wants to go on the Friday? Tell you what, my email inbox says otherwise. I have been hounded nonstop by people. Black Friday sale. Yeah, Black well, Friday there's a lot even- of, that's the thing though. It's all online now. Everyone's doing yeah. Amazon. Everyone's shopping the online. There, you remember there used to be, and there still will be, but there used to be Cyber Monday where mm-hmm. on the Thursday and Friday, you would do the in-store stuff. And then Monday you do Cyber Monday. But I noticed, so like, and it's not just because of COVID, it was leaning that way, but places would start doing the Black Friday on like the Monday and you could go into the store and get stuff or just do it online. And then, you know, you start to go out and places were like really quiet. And then this year it was like, there was nothing. Cause you know, every year you get those little fun videos of people being trampled in stores <laughs> that you get to, you get to laugh at how ridiculous yeah. America is. That's how I bring in the holidays, man. I haven't Somebody seen, get trampled I haven't over seen a TV. one of those. I think that was the point of, of them like doing the sales <laughs> me- all week. They messed up. <laughs> That's black Friday. If there isn't a bunch black of people fighting over a action figure, Jingle, jingle bells start, jingle all the way style. Turbo man. Turbo man. <laughs> all right. Is that our show? I think so. All right. I, I think, think we covered it. everything. Did you guys have anything else? Uh, there, there, there's always more to say, but we'll save it for next week. I guess if, if, if I remember. Uh, next episode will be ep 30. Um, it will probably be the last episode of the year. And then we're going to take a short break through December so that all of us can work on our projects, whether it be Eric's music, Derek's channel and streams, my channel. Um, And then we'll hit the ground running again first Sunday of January with episode 31. Um, And we'll probably refresh some stuff. I mean, it'll be pretty much the same show. I think we've we've really enjoyed this format over the last 10 Mm -hmm. episodes, but we've had a little tradition accidentally of changing things up every 10 eps so i think what we'll do is just get some new graphics and get some new uh fun fun maybe maybe we'll work harder on getting some nice sound bites we'll go back through some episodes pull some sound bites yeah that sounds I'm fun. i'm down with that we'll just we'll just come back with some new fun ideas we should come back with the first episode being super fun and filled with guest interactions and we'll line stuff up we'll make music again and play some games I'm 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 so down with that. Honestly, I really enjoyed making jingles and stuff. Um, but probably, yeah, more guests and stuff as well because we haven't we've only had two guests, yeah. I guess, at this point. You know what? Uh, what if we're going every ten episodes of something new? That could be seasons. So, what season would thirty one be? Season three or four? Season four. Yeah, okay, beginning so of let's, season. Four. Let's say we're entering season four of the show. I like okay. that. That sounds good. I'm right? That That's, I love it. It's a lot more than uh, 13 episodes of our old show. So we're, 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 we're off to a good start. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for listening. If you're listening to the audio, we appreciate you. In the video, of course, leave a comment below. Hey, if you're listening to the audio, rate it on like whatever you're listening on and drop a comment yes. on that too. 
um, leave a voicemail and uh, leave a value viewer phone because we're going to start doing those again soon. Because they're coming. They're coming. <laughs> they're on the. They're back on the way again. Yes. Derek, you want to close it? Sure thing. Fist bumps only. Thank you for watching and listening. Catch up with The Wooden Eric Show at woodeneric.com, fill out the valued viewer form to be part of the show, and leave the boys a voicemail at 210-951-4927. Bye.